In 1978, in a town in Denver, a baseball game is taking place, where we meet the siblings Finney and Gwen. Finney is about to strike out the batter but fails, and they lose the game. The batter tells him he was impressed and that he almost made it. Good game. Good game. We see the batter riding a bike very casually when suddenly a black van approaches. And so it begins. Welcome to Random Recaps. In this video, I am going to recap the movie. Finney and Gwen live nearby with their widowed and alcoholic father, who mistreats them. When Finney and Gwen head to school, Finney notices that the batter, named Bruce, is missing and being searched for. They see a fight where a boy named Robin beats up a bully badly. While Gwen tells Finney about the grabber, a person who kidnaps children, Finney gets scared, and we see the black van from before passing by in the background. Finney is a shy yet intelligent boy who is constantly bullied. He goes to the bathroom to hide, but some kids come to beat him up. His friend Robin arrives, scares them off, and threatens them. Gwen is called to the principal's office because some detectives want to ask her about some dreams she had. Apparently, Gwen dreamed that Bruce was kidnapped. The detectives ask her questions, but Gwen says it was just a dream and insults them. It's just a dream, you dumb fucking fart knockers. Gwen's a Lynn Blake! Meanwhile, days later, Robin is walking alone, encounters the grabber, and is kidnapped. Their father is informed and tells Finney that Robin has been kidnapped and everyone goes out to search for him. Gwen prays to Jesus to help her dream something to find Robin. The detectives visit Gwen's house to see if she dreams of something, but she doesn't. Finney flees from the kids who wanted to beat him up, and Gwen goes to help him, hitting one with a rock, but they beat her up and continue beating poor Finney. Finney befriends a girl, and Gwen teases him. Oh, Finney, Stop. will you be my lab partner? Shut up. Gwen goes to a friend's house while Finney goes home, but on his way, he encounters the black van. And the grabber kidnaps him and takes him to a basement. The grabber leaves, and Finney sees that there's only a bathroom and a disconnected black phone. He lies down on the mattress and falls asleep. Gwen's father calls her to ask about Finney, and Gwen runs out in desperation. She cries while praying, and a phone rings. Finney gets up to answer, but the grabber says it doesn't work. The grabber says he built the basement to be soundproof, so screaming is useless. Finney tells him that he killed the other children, and the grabber says no. I don't believe you. The grabber leaves, and Finney starts screaming. Finney notices a vent above that he might escape through, but he can't reach it. The phone rings again. Finney answers, but no one speaks. Finney was asleep, and upon waking, he sees the grabber watching him sleep. The grabber says he just wanted to watch him and leaves. What the hell? The phone rings once more. <laughs> Finney answers and asks for help. A voice speaks, saying his name. <sighs> the phone keeps ringing. Finney answers again. He is told not to hang up. The speaker says he doesn't remember his name, but as they talk, Finney realizes it's Bruce, the batter from the beginning. Bruce tells him about a loose tile that he can easily remove to dig a tunnel and escape and then stops talking. Bruce? Bruce? We see a flashback of Bruce's kidnapping and Finney shouting for help, which turns out to be Gwen's dream. While Gwen searches for Finney on her bike, he tries to escape using Bruce's advice. He starts digging but seems unable to continue and falls asleep. The grabber arrives with breakfast. When he leaves, he leaves the door open. But when Finney goes to open it, the phone rings. Someone tells him not to go up because it's a trap. Finney asks if it's Bruce, but it's not. I don't know any Bruce. The boy says he used to deliver newspapers, and Finney realizes it's Billy. You're Billy Showalter. Billy warns him not to go up because the grabber is waiting with a belt and will kill him. Finney slowly goes up. And yes, the grabber was waiting with a belt to beat him up. Finney goes back down and eats breakfast. The phone rings while Finney is sleeping, he wakes up and answers. It's Billy again. 
telling him there's a cable hidden under the wall. Using the bottle, Finney aims it at the vent to use it there. Meanwhile, Gwen is dreaming about Billy and his kidnapping. Finney grabs the cable and tries to hook it to the vent. But he can't, so he uses the bathroom rug and manages to do it. He tries to climb but falls. Finney manages to remove the vent cover, but it's useless because he can't climb up. Gwen tells her father about her dreams. Their father tells her that their mother also had dreams and committed fearing Gwen might face the same fate. They go out searching for Finney. The detectives, while investigating, talk to a man named Max, who is also interested in finding the grabber and shows them his theories of where he could be. Max tells the police that he lives with his brother. The detectives leave, and Max takes a sniff. We realize Finney is in Max's basement, and Max doesn't even know. Whoa, 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 whoa! Finney keeps digging. The grabber brings him food again and finds Finney pretending to sleep. The grabber asks his name, and Finney lies. Taylor. The grabber gets angry, knowing it's not his real name. He says he was going to let him go and leaves the door open again. The phone rings. No one answers, and the grabber falls asleep. Finney apparently has a small flashlight and starts looking around, seeing a dead boy floating. The dead boy points to the phone. Finney answers, and a boy tells him he doesn't have much time left. Finney asks if he's Griffin, one of the grabber's victims. Griffin shows Finney the combination to a lock, somehow written on the wall, and informs him that the grabber is currently asleep. Finney quietly goes up the stairs, opens the door with the combination, and escapes as the grabber's dog starts barking. The grabber wakes up and chases Finney in the van. Finney runs, asking for help, but the grabber catches him. House lights turn on, but the grabber threatens him to stay quiet. He knocks Finney out. The next morning, the phone rings again, and Finney answers. It's Vance who used to scare him. Vance says, Today's the day, motherfucker! We see a flashback where Vance fights a boy and writes some numbers on his arm. The police take Vance away, and Gwen, with her psychic powers, dreams about it and sees the entire scene. She realizes the house's location and wakes up. Vance informs Finney about a hole in the wall leading to a freezer he can escape through. Thank you. Finney starts digging the hole with the toilet cover, breaks the wall, and opens the back of the freezer, but it's locked, and he can't escape. Finney cries in a corner. The phone rings again. Finney answers, and it's his friend Robin. Robin consoles Finney and encourages him to finally stand up and fight for himself with the tools he has. Robin tells him he wants him to kill the grabber. Finney asks what to do, and Robin instructs him to use the phone as a weapon, fill it with dirt, and shows him fighting moves. Finney says goodbye to Robin. Bye, Finn. Bye, Robin. Fills the phone with dirt and sets traps for the grabber. Gwen goes out looking for the house she saw in her dreams and encounters the kidnapped children's ghosts. <laughs> Standing there, she realizes the house is across the street. She goes to her house and calls the detectives. Meanwhile, Max takes another hit and discovers where the grabber hides the children. In his own house, Max goes to the basement and finds Finney. But when he tries to help Finney, the grabber arrives and kills his brother Max with an axe. No, no, talk no. About this. The police and detectives arrive at the house Gwen told them about. The grabber is about to kill Finney with the axe and calls his dog. The detectives enter the house but find no one. When the grabber is about to strike with the axe, Finney dodges, trips the grabber into the hole he dug, causing the grabber to twist his ankle. Finally, we see what we all wanted, Finney finishing off the grabber. Side <laughs> Finney hits him with the phone, but the grabber grabs him during one of the hits. Finney pulls off the grabber's mask, driving him mad, and punches him again. Finney strangles the grabber with the phone cord, and the phone rings. It's for you. Finney puts it to the grabber's ear, and the children taunt him. Today's the day, motherfucker! 
Finney kills him. The police find a basement. Finney looks for a stake to distract the dog. Finney goes up the stairs. The detectives find a basement, but it's where the grabber buried his victims. Gwen realizes Finney has escaped and was in the house across the street. She runs and hugs him. Their father arrives and apologizes for how he treated them. Time passes, and Finney is back at school. Now treated with respect, and everyone whispers. We see a confident Finney, more Jigachad. At the end of the movie, he sits next to the girl he likes. Hi, Finney. Call me Finn. And that's how the movie ends. I hope you enjoyed the recap. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.